Hi, I'm Stephanie and I take the bus to school. My name is Lauren and I bike to school most days or I take the bus. I'm Andrew and I drive to school. Hi, I'm Brett and I take the bus to school. My name is Mariana. My name is Manuel. I mostly transport a bus or bike walking. And I use bicycle, bus and car sometimes. So. And we're, we're Team Mobility! mobility. <laughs> <laughs> Team Mobility aims to assess issues and realities regarding sustainable transportation in two distinct communities, University of Minnesota Duluth and La Pila, Mexico. The two branches of Team Mobility include four UMD students and two University of San Luis Potosi students, both of whom engage in participatory research at their respective community sites. These are our stories. UMD is committed to integrating sustainability into all aspects of campus life through its Energy Action Plan. Published in June 2011, the plan aims to achieve a 25% reduction in emissions by the year 2020, all the while working towards a carbon neutrality target date of 2050. Therefore, transportation initiatives, as well as other energy-saving behaviors, have become a priority. The campus is located in the Northland of Minnesota, overlooking Lake Superior, the largest body of fresh water in the United States. Located at the top of the hill in Duluth makes it a bit difficult for those who live below the hill or far off campus to commute. With about 10,000 students and 2,000 staff and faculty, and limited traffic and parking space, the university operates several programs during the school year to help students get around the city with sustainable and efficient options. UMD Parking Services offers ways to save money and reduce carbon emissions and fuel consumption. Students that commute are able to buy a parking pass that is valid for the outer parts of campus for a reduced price of $120 compared to a maroon parking pass designated for the closer middle parts of campus, which is $225. Not driving to the center of campus reduces congestion and also reduces the amount of carbon emissions being released in one area. Additionally, drivers have the incentive to carpool. Every person in the car, along with the driver, receives one stamp on their carpool card. A full card of 10 stamps is redeemable for one free entry into the pay lot. Carpoolers can also now share a parking permit. Perhaps the most successful program is the UPASS program. This program is a partnership of UMD and the Duluth Transit Authority that promotes public transportation. Every student enrolled at the university pays a student service fee of $12.50 from their tuition to fund the UPASS program. In turn, all students who qualify have free access to ride the bus all year round, whenever and wherever they would like. All the buses stop at the UMD bus hub, located conveniently in the middle of campus. This makes it much easier for students to save money instead of driving to school to get around. Through the UPASS program, UMD successfully prevents 349 metric tons of carbon dioxide in emissions an amount equivalent to the CO2 released by burning about 40,000 gallons of gasoline. Biking to school and around the city can be a fast and fun way to get around. True, it may be hard to go uphill. Uh, I don't like to bike because I live at the bottom of the hill and biking up it is a lot of work. However, students have solved this problem by placing their bikes on the bus to ride uphill and then easily ride downhill afterwards. There are accessible storage and parking spots for bikes located by the bus hub and on many other parts of the campus. Currently, only 2% of people bike to school, not surprisingly so since we are at the top of a hill. However, avid cyclist and environmental education coordinator Tim Bates believes that small future changes will ensure its popularity to rise. Transportation that we call alternative transportation, like biking or walking, etc is a key part of that. But actually I think one of the most important things we need to do is realign people's attitudes that it's not alternative, that it should be kind of considered a primary mode of transportation. Things that make those uh, opportunities happen are uh, improved infrastructure like trails, 
we need to develop some social norming approaches that help people say, no, that's not the way I should do it. I should walk or bike and be healthy and contribute to our society versus um, be a consumptive part of our society. To get people aware of the value of active transport because it's good for your body. People sit too much, particularly in lecture halls and so on. You, you sit, you walk to the next one, you sit, you walk to the next one. And so if you can at least get 10, 15 minutes to a half an hour or an hour a day of biking in, that's gonna be really good for your health, which is gonna help you academically because um, research shows that physical activity helps your brain work better. Help get UMD excited about change with biking and walking and skateboarding or whatever tool you want to use that's other than an internal combustion engine. While walking isn't the most popular way to get to school, it's definitely the best way to get around campus. The UMD campus is built so that people can walk anywhere they want pretty quickly. A recent addition that can attest to this is the Blue Stone Walkway. It was built in the summer of 2012 to connect the newly renovated Bluestone apartments in stores to the rest of UMD. In fact, it is usually faster to take the walkway instead of driving on the road to campus. Additionally, UMD is working on improving the sidewalks around the outskirts of campus to try and increase the number of people who can bike and walk to school. This will allow a safer and more convenient way to get around. We decided to speak to some students to hear more about their transportation choices. So I like to ride the bus because um, I don't have to pay for a parking pass and um, it picks me up right outside my house. I live close enough where I can walk, otherwise I drive, but finding a parking spot is absolutely ridiculous because there's hardly any parking and they took away a lot of the meters. Um, usually I try to bus because it saves me money. I can't afford to pay for parking here. Otherwise I'll take the meter once in a while or I'll park at my boyfriend's house and walk to school because he lives really close. Uh, so just right over there, I live in Oakland Apartments. I just walk here. Um, I, I don't drive to school a lot. It's because there's no free parking. You have to pay for it. And then if you want to park on the street, you also find space because most people use it. And the bus is way easy because it drops me off in front of my house. So Whether it's carpooling, busing, biking, or walking, UMD encourages alternative transportation to reduce its carbon footprint. These programs promote the Energy Action Plan to ensure a more sustainable campus and in turn, a more sustainable world. La Pila is a community located at the skirts of the city of San Luis Potosí. There live around 6,722 people and it is located 1,807 meters above sea level. Its climate is semi-arid and it is considered that this community has a high level of poverty. For making this work, we used participatory research as well as qualitative and some quantitative research. Many people were interviewed by us in order to get information about the conditions people live in and how they feel about the problem of transportation in their community. For our quantitative method, we made an online survey and an in situ survey. This was done as an outline to compare the answers of the people we surveyed in La Pila and the people we surveyed online. For surveying La Pila, we tried to gather information from a diverse group of people from different ages and socioeconomic statuses. We did this because we wanted to have as good of a representational survey as possible of the people from La Pila. For our online survey, we just posted the link on Facebook and on WhatsApp for people to fill out. Comparing the results, we realized that people in the city prefer to use private transportation rather than public transportation or walking. This one was answered only by people who live in the capital, San Luis Potosí. The number of people who answered our online survey was 54. In La Pila, we could interview only 10 people. While we were applying the service, we tried to gather other kind of information, more specific and personal, which was in fact the most significant. 
We realize that even though La Pila is a very small community, its habitants still suffer from typical transportation problems that you will find in a major city. A good example would be the traffic jams that happen in the mornings and late afternoons in La Pila. These traffic jams can get very bad. Some people that we talked to told us that it sometimes takes them an extra hour to get where they want to go if they get stuck in these traffic jams. Oftentimes, these traffic jams are caused by the city's poor planning of its industrial zone. Other problems that we heard from people was that there are not enough buses to satisfy the current demand. Plus, the few buses that La Pila does have are old and in poor condition due to lack of regular maintenance. We also discovered that many people believe that these problems are caused by a lack of education and public knowledge in infrastructure, such as roads, bridges, and pavement. They believed that this is an important issue that needs to be attended to as soon as possible because these issues greatly affect their daily lives. Even so, there are other problems that people from La Pila don't seem to dimension. When we asked about contamination caused by cars, buses, and other vehicles, they answered that it was only affecting the capital of the state, which is at least 10 miles away from them. They didn't consider it an actual problem. Many of the people that we surveyed believe that La Pila's main transportation problems are its traffic jams and the accidents caused by them. Nevertheless, another major problem we saw was La Pila's air pollution. A lot of this pollution is due to particles and contaminants in the air that come from the exhaust of their cars. Also, there is a big problem with the air pollution contaminating their water. A lot of the motor vehicles in La Pila use gasoline as a fuel source. The exhaust from these vehicles goes up into the air and mixes with the water in the clouds. When it rains, all of this pollution comes back down and goes into the city's sources of water, thus polluting them. Some people said that these issues are mostly caused by the government's lack of understanding of the problems they have. For example, many of the buses are old and emit high concentrations of greenhouse gases, such as CO2 and H2S. Others claim that the problems associated with transportation are insecurity due to the delinquency and an awful infrastructure of the roads. That is why we will suggest the government to solve social problems in order to solve environmental ones. If people have stopped being afraid of muggers and kidnappers, maybe they will start using public transportation more frequently or use bikes or transport by foot. Also, the improvement of the streets and avenues people use could help them to feel confident and secure when they use bicycle or go by foot somewhere. Many people told us that they will care about environment problems such as this one if there was no danger that they will be mocked or killed if they decided to stop using their private vehicles to transport. We were T-Mobility's USLP and thank you for your attention. Through this collaboration, we have learned that combining social and physical sciences is necessary for inclusive solutions regardless of geography. In regards to La Pila and UMD, even though we are thousands of miles apart and we have different social obstacles to overcome, we all share this earth and need to work together to understand solutions. <laughs>